this is Gail with Brittany and F. Naperville. And happy Valentine's Day, happy Galentine's Day, happy Guilentine's Day. Is that a thing? I don't know. But anyway, thanks for joining us today. We're going to make lemurs in love. Look at them. Aren't they super cute? And uh, this is our pattern of the month, Elizabeth Hartman, Lana the lemur. And we opted to make the small quilt size. I added my own special little touch, which is the heart. And I'm going to show you how to do the applique with a super cool new trick. I'm going to show you how to fussy cut. And I'm going to show you how to do free motion hearts with meandered in-betweens. Meander. Meander is sort of like stippling, but bigger. And, uh, and yeah, I guess I don't really have to say anything else because we need to get started. We're making a whole quilt this time. Let's just take a little minute to talk about the supplies that you're gonna need. Now we've put together lemurs and love kits um, that we packaged ourselves. It stars the Lana lemur pattern from Elizabeth Hartman. And there, that's gonna give you all the step-by-step -step instructions for making the actual blocks for both the lemur on the right and the lemur on the left. Please have a sewing machine with a quarter inch foot for doing your piecing, an open toe foot for your applique, and a free motion foot for your puffy batting. As far as the thread goes for piecing, I used the Aurifil 50 weight and 100% cotton. We're gonna use the YLI Wonderful Invisible Thread that is a 0 0.004 millimeter thickness. It's really thin. And I use the smoke color to go with our darker red heart applique. And um, I like Microtext size 70 needles, but you can also use an embroidery needle size 75 to go with your applique. And then whatever quilting needle goes best with your fabric, you might also wanna pick something like that up as well. Additional supplies, because we did that heart applique, I'm using the Appliquick tools. And the Appliquick tools that I like are the three-hold scissors, the Appliquick rods, and I use the Bond glue. And we carry all of these products here at Bernina of Naperville. There's Dream Puff batting in the 36 by 45 inch size, a backing to measure 36 by 45. And then of course, you're gonna need binding when you do your binding. Quilting gloves if you need to get a better grip on your quilting. And also, Appliquick has their own interfacing and I used about an eight inch square of that for our heart. Now, through, this hand, through the handout that you're gonna be able to download via the YouTube description or our Bernina of Naperville website under classes and our class download handout section, and then also in the class description of the Lemurs in Love, um, this particular handout is also gonna have the shape and size of three different hearts that you might want to be able to, to applique, depending on the, the size of the love that your lemurs have for each other. What's in the kit? So our lemurs in love kit contains, of course, like I said, the pattern, and then there's some fabric. That background fabric that I'm pointing to there, that is our Merci Perry architecture print in yellow. And so you're gonna get that to make the small quilt size. The lemurs are made up of gray, like a charcoal gray and black. And so you're gonna get two 10 inch squares of each so that you can make your lemurs. Now make sure that you in inverse them so that you have one that's black with gray stripes and then another one that's gray with black stripes. We added white grunge fabric for the faces and tails, a gray polka dot scrap for the inner ears, a red scrap for the heart, and as a special treat, there's some Liberty of London peacock print, and this is to fussy cut their eyes. Now, cutting and labeling. What you see there as a picture of the labeling is what I did on last month's pattern of the month, which was the penguin party. But I got tired of handwriting these things on scraps, so we, we made you a labeling sheet. And you can download this from Bernina of Naperville, and it's under our class handouts section. And if you get our class handout for this, we've got links right in this handout to take you exactly to where you need. But I would recommend that you get this and then print out as many as you need to label your lemurs. You have a piece of cute little Liberty of London peacock fabric in your kit and I just thought it would be really fun to take one of these peacock eyes and make it our lemur eye. Now the piece for your lemur eye only needs to be about an inch so I'm going to use this ruler 
and see how on this ruler you can see there's a little cross right in the middle well i'm going to line that up right in the middle of the eye of, the, of a peacock feather and i think i'm going to go for this one just right here so i'm going to line that up just there now some of you might want to draw a little box around this or something but i simply tend to just cut around it with my see-through ruler and I'm just gonna line it up just like that. Don't worry about the other bits from the feather. We're, we're only concerned with that little eye. So I'm just gonna make a cut that way and a cut that way. And now I'm gonna turn around my material and just measure an inch from the cut edge, just like that, and cut again. And that is a fussy cut eye, and you're gonna need four of them because we're making two lemurs. Once you get your eyes sewn into place, you make this little unit. And this little unit here, you actually make it from the measurements that they give you for the uh, T, U, V, and W pieces. However, they want you to trim it down. Now, on my original one, I have a cockeyed lemur. Now, that lemur represents me because my eyes point in different directions and aren't totally symmetric, but you know, not all of you are gonna want Gale like cockeyed lemurs. So <laughs> I'm gonna show you how to be consistent. So when you square them up, make sure that you just square up your eyes the same way. So what you're gonna do is you're going to kind of measure, you're gonna use your ruler to measure your distance. Now the ultimate size needs to be two inches by two and a half inches. So all that I would recommend that you do is decide, okay, I'm going to go three quarters of an inch away from each edge or five eighths or whatever you want to do. So I'm just going to trim a little sliver off of that edge. Now I'm going to turn it around and measure my two inches by two and a half inches. So there's my two and a half inch line and my two inches. Now, if you want your eyes closer to your nose, you would just leave this distance smaller. Okay, so there is our trimmed eye that is at two inches by two and a half inches. You might have seen our little heart on our lemurs in love. And that was done with needle turn applique, but not by hand. No, 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 no. Gail doesn't do hand applique. But what I do use are appliquick sticks and a bond glue stick and these totally awesome scissors. And there's one more key ingredient. And that is this special fusible lightweight interfacing or the stabilizer. Now, normally in the world of machine, invisible machine applique, I would use freezer paper like this and freezer paper has a shiny side on the bottom. And then what happens is you prepare everything, you glue it with a water soluble glue stick, you sew it down and then at the end, you cut away and you pull the stuff out and it can leave you with a sticky mess or it can mean that you have to get your quilt wet. So in this method, we don't have to do that if we use this special interfacing. Now, I do have to tell you, it's a little bit pricey, however, a lot of times you're using this for small things, so you might not need to get yards and yards and yards of it. It it's comes one yard at a time, 36 inches by 36 inches, and we do have it at Bernina of Naperville under our Apple Quick section, which is right on our homepage. So this is, this is one of the items. So what I've done is I've taken our heart, and you're going to be able to download this from the Lemurs in Love sign up page and it's also on our handout section of our Bernina of Naperville handouts but um, don't forget that that you're going to want this so that you can have a heart the right size because th because this is something that I added to the quilt that wasn't in the original pattern 
So what I've done is I've taken a small Sharpie, you know, the fine point Sharpie like these, and I traced from our pattern, which is right here, I traced this piece. And so now this is the piece that I want to trim away all of the excess. So when you do this invisible machine applique, you actually cut your interfacing out. Now, if you were using freezer paper, you would do the same method. You trace it on the freezer paper and cut out. And then these are the Appliquick scissors. Now, I don't know if you've ever tried to cut fussy things out before, but it puts a lot of stress on your middle finger and your index finger, because you end up kind of squeezing the scissors like that. So I really like this because we've got that extra little holder and I just feel like I can make a lot more cuts. Now, this heart is simple because this is a simple project, but I'm gonna do a demonstration in the next few weeks where we do paper cut Hawaiian style applique and that is really intricate. Yeah, see those cute little placemats? I don't know what I would have done without these and this system to do those. Anyway, also the bottom blade of these scissors is serrated. Now you've probably seen me use the Karen K. Buckley scissors as well, the perfect scissors. And if you don't have these three hold scissors, you can also go ahead and use those perfect scissors because they work very well too. Camilla's trying to get here in the shot, everybody. Every time I turn the camera on when I'm here at the shop by myself, she starts up with the squeak toys. I don't know what's going on. All right, you can see here I have a turn side and a glue side. Well, we're gonna glue first. And these glue sticks that the Appliquick recommends actually are really slippery when they go on our piece and they also the glue stays wet a little bit longer than the sew line ones that we carry here and but just like you might expect from any of your fabric glue sticks they do have a little bit of a color to them so that you can see when it does dry so you know if you have to apply more glue so we're going to take this at the glue side so we don't get any glue on top of our piece here. We're gonna lay this down and we're gonna glue. And I'm not gonna go all the way around. I just wanna do that little curve there. And I added a generous portion of the glue. Now I'm here at my turn side and I wanna show you my Apple Quick Sticks. So, or rods as they're called. So I've got this one that looks sort of like a fondue skewer and I'm gonna use that so that my piece stays into place and won't spin on me as I turn over. Then I use this other piece like a brush. Then there's kind of poking devices on the other end and those are helpful if you wanna spin, but also these are helpful when you really have to turn tiny pieces like on my Hawaiian quilting sample. But we're gonna just do the fork and I'm gonna start by turning over just like this and I'm kind of, I'm brushing it just a little bit. And you can use your fork sideways if you wanna spin, but I, right now, for this, I want it planted firmly down there. And I'm just gently brushing and as the glue stays kind of wet, I can even, there we go. Just straighten it up a little bit. Just like so. And around. All right, when you glue the tip down, I put a generous portion of it right there. And then I'm not gonna move it from my glue side, but I'm just going to gently fold that tip in at like a, kind of like I'm making a little half square triangle there. And just push that right into place like that. Then I can go around with the rest of my glue.
And now I'm gonna transfer it to the other side. And now continue with my gluing adventure. Now, it's a little bit easier to do this, I'm gonna tell you, with your finger when it's a big piece like this. I mean, not easier to do it with your finger, but it's possible and you don't feel, you know, the gooiness as much, but I'm telling you, if you have to do anything fussy, you're gonna want these. Or if you're gonna do a lot of circles, a lot of those tiny circles that you don't wanna sew on by hand. I mean, so this method is for hand applique, but I think it works perfectly well for this invisible machine applique method that we're using. Okay, so now that's perfect. I'm gonna go back to the glue side and add a little bit more glue and then I'll meet you back here. I said I'd come back and here I am. I'll take our last bit for our point and I'm gently, now I'm gonna use my poking device here I'm going to poke that into place just so I have a nice sharp point. See, and I mean, these little tips are just so perfect for getting everything just right there. But like I said, this is, was traditionally designed to be for hand applique, but I think it works so well for machine applique because I love invisible machine applique because sometimes satin stitching is just too bulky and you don't always want to work with fusible web. And I also can tell you that this interfacing, if you really wanted to remove it, and not have a little bit of interfacing on your heart, it does remove. But you would have to dissolve the glue in water to get the interfacing out, but you can gently peel it out as well. But there's our heart with our turned under edges. You can see. Now all that we have to do now is attach it to the background. To do invisible machine applique, it's important to know which stitch you wanna use. Now, a lot of you may have a machine that only has a blind hem stitch. That's like this stitch number nine. And normally that setting would be at about three and a half millimeters by 2.4 or something like that. Now to do this, you're going to, for our invisible machine application, we literally are making this little guy about one and a half to two millimeters wide and we're making this really, really close together. So it looks about like that. And then the needle position also gets moved all the way to the right. If you have a fairly newer Bernina machine, they have a quilting stitch and it's 1331 on the seven series and the eight series. And it looks like this and see how it's already adjusted about like I did that blind hem. So then you just wanna move your needle position. I like to move my needle position all the way to the right so I know exactly where I'm gonna be stitching. Now, one of the things I want you to notice here is that I need to tell my machine that I have my nine millimeter plate on or else it was gonna go with that five and a half. I had that on from when I showed you the demonstration of the off the edge technique. I also have the number 20D foot on. Now you could use a 20 if you have a five and a half millimeter machine, you could use a 20C, but you know what? My 20D was just right here next to my machine and that's why I'm using it today. Anytime you use a D foot, don't forget that you're gonna pull that dual feed down to activate the dual feed. Otherwise your machine is just not gonna feed properly. I'm using a monofilament thread 
for the top stitching on this heart because I don't want to see my thread at all. And because the heart is a little bit darker red, I'm using the smoke monofilament. Now this monofilament is made by YLI and it's called Wonder Invisible Thread and it's 0 0.004 millimeters. That's tiny, everybody. So I'm gonna thread this up with my machine and I'm using an embroidery needle size 75 in my machine. Now, one of the reasons why I move my needle all the way over to the right is because when it takes its normal straight stitches, it's gonna go just off the edge of the heart. Then when it comes over to the left, it's gonna take a little bite out of the heart. I also want to point out to you that I've engaged needle down and you're definitely going to want to use needle down so that you can pivot and I pivot a lot when I do a project like this and I'm also making sure that my that I'm using my needle down and my knee lever so that I can lift and pivot lift and pivot. For those of you that have hover functions on your machine that would be pretty much anything 570 machine and up. You might like hover because then you don't have to keep using the knee lever. The foot just pops up for you when you've engaged needle down. Now the first stitch that this is going to take is a bite into my heart side. Did you see that? It was quick, right? So now I'm going to take a few stitches. It takes a bite and stops. Now I like to pivot when my needle is on the right of what I'm appliquing. See that? And you know, the, the thread is clear. So let's be totally honest here. If it doesn't go perfectly smoothly, by the time this thing is quilted and washed, you're not gonna know the difference. Now, I am applicating my heart onto a scrap piece just to show you the applique process, but you're gonna put your heart down on your lemur quilt after you've already assembled it. Um, all of the piecing on the top, then you're gonna put the heart down. I put mine in the middle of the tails, but you can put yours wherever you want. Maybe one lemur is in love with the other lemur and the other lemur's not feeling it. I mean, it's up to you. want to bring down your Valentine's Day because you know by unrequited love stinks so but I hope you're happy having a good Galentine's Day or Valentine's or isn't there like a Guylentine's Day now I don't know whatever it is it's an eat chocolate and drink wine kind of day See how I took that one extra stitch so I could be on the right side of my applique? Oh, I missed. Do you see that? That happens sometimes. I'm going to use my knee. Pardon me. I'm going to use my heel to heel tap on my foot control and then don't tell anybody, but I'm just wiggling that back into position. I think I told you what kind of bobbin thread I have in here. Well, I have white OESD bobbin fill. You can't see it, can you? See, I'm stopping and now I'm pivoting. And now I'm gonna pivot right at that point and eventually, be back to where I came from. All right, this is easy. I'm going to over sew a little bit and now I'm going to stop, press my cutting button, and we're done with the applique. Now, I do want to give you a little bit of advice. Let's turn this over. And you can see here's where I appliqued my heart. I'm gonna use those super cool three hole finger scissors and I'm gonna trim a quarter of an inch away just to remove one layer of fabric. Now, they make duckbill scissors for trimming appliques, but you know what, for this heart, 
Listen, I got these new scissors and I'm gonna use them on everything. It's kind of like those new shoes. You know, you get your new shoes and then you're starting to buy clothes to go with your new shoes. Although I have to tell you, I've traded in my fancy heels for Uggs. Just can't wear them at the shop. Get little funny looks too, you know, clopping around in the Christian Louboutin shoes. Okay, see how I'm just trimming, leaving about a quarter of an inch like that? I'm just gonna go all the way around. I know, you're saying, Gail, dear God, will you please back up the camera? Here we go. Better? Now, I'm also gonna use this piece to demonstrate how to do your own loop-de-loop -loop heart design. Now you can see on my lemurs that I created, I, I'm not gonna joke, I, I'm not gonna sit there with a quilt that size and do it hand-guided here at the machine. I did that on the uh, Q24 on the frame with Qmatic. However, I think if you practice your doodling a little bit, you'll be able to do those hearts and squiggles on your own. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So what I'm gonna do is get this guy tossed away. I'm gonna sandwich this up with Dream Puff and a cotton batting, and then I'm gonna show you how fun it can be to do your own background fill and how we can give that heart a little puff. You know, sometimes a Sharpie marker or a pencil and some doodle paper is your best friend when you're talking about trying some new designs for free motion quilting. So for instance, I want you to try doing a little stipple and then incorporating a heart. And then a stipple. So, one of the things that you want to kind of train yourself to do is to kind of draw these little hearts in different patterns. Add some little meandering to it and then draw another heart. And just do this a few times to kind of get your groove on and then you can translate this concept at your sewing machine. So I translated some of our doodling that you saw over here to the good old needle, thread, and fabric. I did, so I'm working with the Dream Puff because that's what I quilted the cute little lemurs with. So if you're looking for a batting like this, this is a Quilter's Dream Cotton, or qu the Quilter's Dream co Company. They're based in uh, somewhere in Virginia, near the beach, I think you know, somewhere a lot warmer than it is here in Chicagoland. But, so this is their Dream Puff. We do carry it here at Bernina of Naperville. And I um, sandwiched it together and kind of did this little textury stitch like this. You can see the little squiggles and whatever. Now, on the fabric that you got for your lemurs for that background, the um, the Perry background with the Champs-Élysées and sacre Coeur in the background. Um, if you pick like a light thread, it'll be a confidence booster for you. Right here, because I'm using the Dream Puff, I've got the Bernina stitch regulator on the machine, but I'm using that Echo Quilt rounded big plastic base. And that's because I think this glides over the puff a little bit better than that smaller open toe foot that you see me use sometimes. So I've got the old Bazaar plugged in. I've got the uh, straight stitch set at two millimeters long and I'm ready to go. So I already did that one, so you don't need to see me do that. I'm gonna bring out our little sample that we did with our heart. Now, another thing I wanna talk to you about is on my example, on my little lemurs in love, you will see that the heart is puffy and the heart's puffy because I quilted kind of densely everything except the heart. So I'm going to start with my little hearts and, and uh, meandering stitch here to show you how you can make your heart stand out. So just like I always do, 
I'm going to put my needle down into my material and bring it up again because I'm going to pull that bobbin thread up through the top. And I happen to have a white thread in the bobbin. You know, I don't know. Got to mix things up a little bit. If I had a white fabric on the back of this, I might want to match it. And, you know, our Berninas will do a pretty good job of matching the same, the different color thread on the bottom as, as on the top. So I'm just going to start with my meander. And I might just kind of make my little wormy stipple stitch a little bit through here. Okay, so now I'm going to make a heart. There's my heart. And now I'm going to go around my heart again, kind of echoing it, but not really. And now more meanders. And I am going to go off the edge just a little bit. Okay, there's another heart. And now I'm going to echo it. Doesn't look so bad. And I'm doing a little bit more meander than heart right now, just because um, it's an easier way for me in this little small area. And you know what? I'm going to turn around because it's hard for me to make a heart upside down. Turn that heart upside down. All right. So now, here we go, a little bit more meandering around the edge of that heart. And now I'm just gonna come up here and make my heart shape. And I'm gonna do this heart inside the other heart. Ooh, tricky. You know what I realized? I've done about five minutes of quilting and I forgot to put my gloves on. All right, oh my gosh, look, I got them back on now. And now you don't have to stare at my little dry fingers either. Okay, so you might have heard me use the term meander rather than stipple. And well, what is meander? The, you know, meandering is also kind of a term for a stipple type looking stitch that would go edge to edge across a quilt, where stippling is a little bit more that tight, little wormy looking stuff. BSR is singing the song of its people at me because I'm moving my hands a little bit too fast. I'm going to try to slow down.
All right. Do you see? I present to you Puffy Heart. But yeah, just doing a little bit of stitching in the background of that heart, but not doing any stitching on the heart makes it puffy. I dig it. All right. So, you know, in the real world, I would finish a little bit more here, but, um, but I think you've got the idea, right? All right. Let's zoom in a little bit closer on the last part of this, just so you can help me get my groove on. a look. You know, it may not be perfect, but if you pick a background like I did, it's going to look great. Now, I know what you're saying. Gail, why didn't you pick a light background so we can see what you did? Well, because it looks really good on this material. <laughs> and let that be a lesson to you. Pick something that's confidence boosting. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's demo. And if you didn't happen to do it, you can pick up a kit to make the lemurs in love. We kitted it here ourselves at Bernina of Naperville. There's a limited supply though. So if you think you want something, take advantage of it. Hey, and if you wanna see more videos just like this one, don't forget to tune in to the Bernina of Naperville YouTube channel. It's easy, it's youtube.com slash Bernina of Naperville. And we would love it if you could like us and subscribe and comment when you have any questions. You can also click the little bell and you'll get an alert every time we upload a video. But in the meantime, ah, take a nice little sip of that wine and eat some of those chocolate bonbons, but don't get the chocolate on your lemurs because they don't like it. <laughs> See you next time.